Well, okay. Pat, you've had a great year. And, uh, and uh, I'm, somehow I get the hard acts to follow. I get hard act to follow with Pat, hard act to follow with Mark, hard act to follow with my mayor. So here it goes. So Madam President, members of the board, fellow ICMA members and our honored guests, good morning. First, let me formally thank my mayor, Jack Seiler, for those awesome remarks. I mean, it's truly inspirational to me when he doesn't talk just about me at an introduction, but talks about all of us and the difference that you're making back home. I have to tell you that the last five years that I have spent working in the city of Fort Lauderdale has truly been the pinnacle of my career. It's a great city, it's exciting times, it's led by a great mayor with a great city commission. And, and let me too recognize Bruce Roberts, our, one of our city commissioners that came here and participated in our, in our conference all week. I've got, uh, I'm really truly blessed every day to be part of their team. Let me also recognize some uh, other folks that are here this morning. Dan Clayman. Uh, Dan has been a, uh, uh, in addition to being our award winner today, he's been a friend and a mentor to me. Mike Siddig from the Florida League of Cities is back there. Mike is the type of guy that always comes up to you and says, what can I do for you? How can I help? How can I make Florida a better state and a better city manager community? And let me thank all the managers from Florida that have come here today also to support. Uh, they have supported me throughout the years. They've been friends, colleagues, and confidants. And finally, let me recognize my partner, Stacy. Stacy Stand and my daughter Caitlin. My, my, my other daughters, uh, Samantha and Elizabeth, uh, could not join us today as school and work kept them uh, at home and away. Uh, you, you know, we all know that we cannot be effective in our chosen profession without the support and love of our families. Mine is no exception. And I thank you all and love you dearly for the support that you give me every day. I also want to say my thanks to Bob O'Neill, who's been a great executive director for our association, but also a great thought leader in our profession and a great friend to many of us. Bob, you know that you've made that lasting impression on us all, and we wish you best in the next chapter. You and Karen will always have a special place in our hearts. This is usually the opportunity for the incoming president to talk about his or her program for the coming year. As I told the board when I first interviewed with them, I have no new program to introduce this year, but rather I plan on using this year to work with our new executive director, Mark Ott. And again, Mark, congratulations, well, well deserved to partner with Mark on continuing our important work on strengthening inclusiveness of both race and gender in our profession, on continuing our important work on fostering leadership in our profession, and adopting our new strategic plan. I need to give a shout out to San Antonio City Manager Cheryl Scully and Triangle J Council Executive Director, uh, Council Government Executive Director Lee Worsley, by the way, I think it's Lee's birthday this morning, so if you see him, wish him well, for their leadership in the process and the entire strategic planning task force for their hard work and dedication. And I know I speak for the board when I say we are looking forward to adopting that new strategic plan in the coming months. So then what, what should I talk about this morning? I asked uh, the local government fellows that work for the city of Fort Lauderdale what they wanted me to hear, what they wanted to hear. And let me ask them to stand and be recognized, those fellows from Fort Lauderdale. So, uh, I do that so I can actually see that they showed up this morning. <laughs> and they gave me a lot of ideas, most of which I ignored, but the common denominator was whatever you say is just fine, just please, please don't embarrass us. And let me ask all the other local government fellows to stand as well this morning and be recognized. They, these are among our new crop. This, 
These are our new crop of engaged leaders in local government. They are the next generation. And for those who know my professional history, I completed five internships in four cities. And yes, I had to actually repeat one, okay? But a, a city manager by the name of Bill McGill and his assistant city manager, Mike Roberto, took a gamble on me and brought me full time to the city of North Miami Beach. Now, 31 years later, I stand before you and I implore you, every member in this hall today, to go home and create an opportunity for our next round of leaders. Sponsor a fellowship, work with a student chapter, and create those opportunities that were created for each of us. Now I'm gonna emphasize in the next few minutes three words, and you'll hear them throughout the year as I travel around to meet you in your regions and your states. Those words are passion, challenge, and legacy. First, passion. We all have a passion for the profession. We show that in the 3,031 counties, 19,522 municipalities, 16,664 townships in the United States, and the many more around the globe. We show that 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It is what makes us thrive and excel. It promotes understanding and empathy. It allows us to manifest our days to build community. However, sometimes our passion is tested, challenged, or muted by the politics of our national scene. With only 41 days left, can you believe that, 41 left? to the presidential election, the discourse of the role of government at all levels seems to ruminate beneath the rhetoric. We, the 11,000 plus members of ICMA, the leaders at the core of better communities need to keep our passion for our profession ignited and burning strong. The way I do this is to listen to the stories about our members, one which well, I will share with you now the story of Yvonne Kimball. I don't know how many of you know Yvonne, but she's only been in the United States since 2003. You see, she was born in Tianjin, China. She saw firsthand what life was like without democracy as she grew up in the later years of the Mao dictatorship. And when Yvonne was a teenager, she was able to get her hands on a book, a banned book of great speeches of the Western world. And it was Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. It's something we all learned in grade school that she read. And he spoke then of, of the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that resonated with her so much that in 2003, she immigrated to the United States and she enrolled in the University of Central Florida's MPA program. And I had an opportunity to work with Yvonne when she interned in our office in Palm Bay. Now, five years later in 2008, just five years after receiving that master's degree and immigrating to the United States, she became city manager of Bowling Green, Florida. And then in 2011, she moved west and became town manager of Dewey Humboldt, Arizona. Now, these are her words. I was stunned but deeply inspired by the concept and wanted to become part of such a noble institution one day. Local governments are much closer to the citizens than the federal government. I knew I would have a better chance to make a difference by working for local governments. She emigrated to, from China to here, heeding those words of Abraham Lincoln so that she could have a better chance to make a difference working at local government. Now that's passion. That's what we have to maintain. Now Yvonne couldn't be here today, but I want her to know that her, and passion, her passion, her words are what inspire me every day. Second word, challenge. Let me share the words of Robert F. Kennedy testifying before a Senate committee just over 50 years ago, almost to the day, he said, the city is not just housing and stores. 
is not just education and employment, parks and theaters, banks and shops. It is a place where men should be able to live in dignity and security and harmony, where the great achievements of modern civilization and the ageless pleasures afforded by natural beauty should be available to all. If this is what we want, and this is what we must want if men are to be free for that pursuit of happiness, which was the earliest promise of the American nation, we will need more than poverty programs, housing programs, and employment programs, although we will need all of these. We will need an outpouring of imagination, ingenuity, discipline, and hard work, unmatched since the first adventurers set out to conquer the wilderness, for the problem is the largest we have ever known. And we confront an urban wilderness more formidable and resistant, and in some ways more frightening than the wilderness faced by the pilgrims or pioneers. And that is our challenge today. Our communities, now 50 years more mature, are faced by those same issues that we were in 1966. But now they're more complicated by the 24-hour news cycle, more extreme weather and events, and incidents of mass violence that are occurring more and more frequently. And this challenge falls squarely upon us in local government here and around the world. Due to the current dysfunction of our federal government, with many of our state governments not far behind, ex exhibiting the similar traits of functionality, local government has become the champion for our nation. From the war on terrorism to the war on opiate abuse, from the crumbling infrastructure to stalled transportation initiatives, it is the leaders in this hall today and the many staff that we have back home that are delivering the core services that our communities rely upon every day. We truly are, we are life well run. Kennedy called upon us for an outpouring of imagination, ingenuity, discipline, and hard work. That calling is as relevant today as was back then. And your association, ICMA, is here to partner with you. Our leadership in the areas of fostering sustainable communities, public safe safety, leadership development, and performance analytics has made us the go-to resource for effective community building globally. However, it cannot be ICMA staff or the board working on this alone. We need, we really need an active and engaged membership, and that means you. So please consider during our next call for volunteers to join one of our 15 task forces, advisory boards, or committees. Let's give our president-elect David Johnstone from Candiac, Quebec, Canada, three times the number of names that I had for, for making these appointments to the important and hardworking committees. Together, let's meet the tumultuous challenge of our communities. Finally, legacy. George Hanbury, who is president of Nova Southeastern Un University and a former city manager of three communities, two in Virginia and one in Florida, and a friend of ICMA, often quotes a Greek proverb, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. As leaders at the core of better communities, we need to keep our eyes focused on the long term when there is so much pressure for us to get instantaneous results. Our conference, and let me th thank again our planning, evaluation, and host committees for a great conference had many sessions devoted to civic engagement, building trust, becoming a smart city, and changing our world. Our conferences and other training provide us with the building blocks for our legacy. And our legacy to our children and their children must be more than the bricks and mortar of buildings, the quality of roads and pipes and the shades of trees. We must leave a personal legacy in our community of positive civil discourse, inclusion of diverse neighbors, and a level of tolerance that is unprecedented in the history of our country. Dan Clayman, Ted Gabler, 
Jan Perkins, our distinguished service award winners today. They are inspirations for us all to follow in building legacy. As I close my remarks this morning and reflect on all the turmoil that is around us every day, I take solace in the words of wisdom from the elders of the Hopi Nation. You've been telling the people that this is the 11th hour. Now you must go back and tell the people that this is the hour and there are things to be considered. Where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in right relation? Where is your water? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth, create your community, be good to each other, and do not look outside yourself for the leader. This could be a good time. There is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there will be those who are, are afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel that they are torn apart and suffer greatly. Know the river has its destination. The elders say that we must let go of the shore, push off into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. And I say, see who is in there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are to take nothing personally, least of all our, ourselves. For the moment that we do, our spiritual growth and journey comes to a halt. The time for the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Thank you.